Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about some cards that are very strange and have been rising in price. And yes, I own them, but not by design. One of the strangest things about Magic the Gathering Finance is these cards, if you played during these era of cards like Mirage or Legends or any of these older sets, you will realize these cards that are spiking are totally useless you these are not even the cards you would put in your trade binder there would be no point in time you would put circle protection artifacts in your trade binder if you were playing magic during this era no one would want it um, not only would no one want it or trade for it it would sit in your trade i mean it's not even one of those cards where you put in your trade binder and just sits there it's not even good enough to put in your trade binder so to see all of these cards just kind of uh, continue to rise in price is insane. And some of them are, you know, some of them go up to $299, but some of them, like this one, went up to $86. Actually, what hit $150, almost, is that almost $200, uh, almost $150 before falling to $86. Now, this is a very strange period in MTG Finance because Standard, there's a little bit of movement in Standard. I don't want to say it's totally dead, but the main movers are these reserve list cards, or these very old cards that might not even be on a reserve list, and they are the bulkiest of bulk. You could not trade, if you try to trade this guy away during Legends, no one would want him. They'd be like, nope, not playing with this. This card sucks. And there's so many of these cards, I, I keep looking at them, they keep spiking. It's because that there's not there's not copies of them in the market, especially near mint. These are not the type of cards that people took really good care of or even saved. So like Macadian Mass, this uncommon is five dollars. Previous to the pirate set. You would not never take this out of bulk. This is the definition of a card that sits at your bulk bind or bulk bins. Not it's not even good enough to for a binder. I'll put it that way. If you put this in your binder, you're crazy and you don't have very good stuff to put in your binder. Now it is five bucks and the foil is 19. So a lot of things has changed, and the biggest change has been casual like i this is kind of where i'm i'm seeing this heading and i i i know i've seen enough repetition in cycles to understand what this cycle is this cycle is a real deal i was a little i was skeptical of 93 94 because in my opinion the cards that were spiking i never played them when i was a kid maybe i didn't have the money to pay uh buy them those very expensive cards to begin with but now the cards that are spiking, I played with. I had Yangamera's Hollow. That was one of my favorite cards. It wasn't very good, but it was still one of my favorite cards. And now to see it spike, it makes sense to me. Okay, this is a card that I played with as a kid. And then for 93, 94, the movement I wanted to see was I wanted to see Savannah Lion. I wanted to see Black Knight. I wanted to see Hypnotic Spectre, which is one of the most iconic it was pretty much a one drop with Dark Ritual, but that was the best opening that you could have had. Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre, and off you go. And I didn't see those prices spike until recently. Uh, I want I liked seeing cards I played with as a kid spike because I can recognize, oh, that was really fun to play with them. And 93, 94 initially were not any of those cards I played with. I never had access to any of them. Maybe, again, too expensive. But now it is like stuff like this. I played with this card. This was considered the worst card in Magic. We all laughed about it. It was kind of funny. But it's a card that I remember very well. And I own many copies of it because everyone thought it was super funny. And I get it. I get why this card is $3. Because a Magic player who played during the dark, which was a very bad time to be playing Magic, to be honest, can laugh about it. It can look at the card. If you send this to one of my friends who's playing during that time, they will appreciate it, right? It's just kind of like, oh, the worst Magic card in history. Thank you. 
Uh, and that is the... I don't want to say it's remembering the past. I just want to say that it's cards that I grew up with. And even if they're not good today, I remember how much fun I had with them. And therefore, I put a higher price point on them. And they're all spiking. Uh, these are cards that... Uh, I play this card, Tombstone... St I probably own 100 copies of this card because it's Mirage. I own 100 copies of every bulk rare in Mirage, pretty much. I remember it being really fun. And I was like, oh, this picture's kind of weird. And to see it at three dollars from pennies, pennies, makes me very happy because these are all of these eight cards are cards that I played with and I enjoyed playing with, and maybe they are not good today, but they were pretty good back in the day, or they weren't as bad as uh, now they seem. Like a lot of it, when you read it today, you're like, oh, well, this card sucks. I mean, it's the whole Sarah Angel versus Bane Slayer Angel, right? Bane Slayer Angel is an upgrade over Sarah Angel in every single way. But I remember Sarah Angel being like almost impossible to beat. Like you play a Sarah Angel and unless they have a uh, two lightning bolts or a sword to plowshare, you, you got them. And just keep attacking and you can block and very simple. Uh, here's another card that was widely undervalued, and I liked playing it. I thought it was kind of funny, and now it's price spiking. The main benefiters of this are actual collectors. I split collectors and spec speculators are not going to own 100 copies of this card. They're just not. This is not a card that you would buy in unless you were trying to do a buyout. But you know who owns 100 copies of this card? collectors because they couldn't get rid of them so let's assume you open and you buy you open and you buy you open and buy collections well you can move a lot of the valuable stuff on buy list but you cannot move Urbbox justice ever until maybe recently there was no period in this graph where you could have sold it for over bulk and now we are being collectors are being rewarded for just having a bunch of cards they couldn't get rid of anyway it is the most odd scenario I have ever seen where true collectors, none of these cards are speculation. Maybe Dingaroo because of that spike, but I mean, previous to the uh, block of some of the Minotaurs, it was not worth very much. It's seven bucks now. I Maybe it goes down to like, but it's never going to be below a dollar anymore. Like RTR, it was a dollar. This is not the type of card that is easy for you to move past RTR. I mean, if you were trying to sell this card for RTR, you people might not even pay bulk for it. Like it's one of those cards like, no, I don't want it. 10 cents, no, I don't want it. And now the collectors, the true collectors who collect Homelands and Fallen Empires, Fallen Empires is doing pretty well. I, Rainbow Veil is in it. I think another very pricey card is in it too, but I forget which one. The Dark is doing well. All these sets that have historically been considered terrible. I mean, come on now. Jeez. If you just collect, if you co collected and you kept your collection, you're now being re rewarded 10, my, more than 10 fold. Your 10 cent cards are now $4. 40 times, 40 fold is what you're being rewarded. That is a true magic collector. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.